right you are still watching ways on january 19th national popcorn day pops onto the screen with a crunch we all love to enjoy the annual celebration recognizes a treat that satisfy um, satisfies a lot of people and also both day and night popcorn evening afternoon midday every day Anytime. even though somebody just broke my heart she's not a popcorn fan i'm going How? to expunge her from the show <laughs> So someone asked me that, how do I like my, love my popcorn? I actually like popcorn pretty um, plain. All those caramel, once you want it's not for me. Popcorn is either um, salted and... So I like, when I go to the cinema, mm -hmm. I do salted and sugar. Mm -hmm. Then I like this popcorn that these people hawk on the street. The one they eat with equa. You know, the, the normal <laughs> popcorn with yeah. ground nut. Mm -hmm. I used mm -hmm. to buy that thing so much. Like, I had to tell myself, oh, no. Calm down. Respect yourself. <laughs> You're a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> but I love popcorn. I don't know. I can actually just go, like some days, I will just drive to the cinema, the house. buy the popcorn, mm -hmm. and go to my house. So it's not like I, I was going to watch to a watch movie. watch a movie in the first place. Yeah. I mean, okay, let me not mention the name of the place, but then I'm also like that. I like to go there to buy popcorn. So it's, it's a cinema, right? I think popcorn is a very healthy snack, mm -hmm. which that's why I like it anyway. It's very light. You, mm. eat, you can eat a lot of it and then... But recently, I'm not saying that I eat it. My tummy hurts. I don't yes. know. Yes. So I, I get bloated. So okay. that's why I have to reduce it. Yeah. So, so I, I think stopped. maybe it's the butter and all those things. They the put in it. And some people put milk as well. I heard yes. it's lactose intolerant. So I think it's also the when they have milk in it, my tummy hurts. But like you said, I don't like caramel, strawberry chocolate i don't know why it's they not are for doing me that it's not for me it's not for me popcorn is popcorn plain and i think if i'm one of my friends actually discovered one lady in ikeja that does so she does her popcorn without oil i think she mm. air fries or something mm -hmm. and it's so healthy that one knows she just puts very little salt okay. so and she eats it and you can snack on that maybe yeah, if we try that maybe, we might not yeah. get bloated i haven't tried so that i yet. think like you know seeing the both of you talking about it i'm sure i'm that one percent of nigerian population that's like what this lady come is on, talking about to me. <laughs> come on, like, so i was before before i came on air, i'm like once we celebrate everyone what's popcorn <laughs> like how is it important that we have to like part um keep aside a day it's to it's celebrate it yeah, it's very important anyways well, what I hope to be like you someday to sit and talk passionately about uh, you know, let me let, let, let us first of all know <laughs> who <laughs> you are. <laughs> Where are you on this one. matter? Are you for us or against us? You know, <laughs> this me, I'm a popcorn fan. You know, every what? every for me, I'm a foodie, so I'm a popcorn fan. Uh -huh. When I sweet, well, like well, salty is a bit of a new one for me because. I think salty is more of a, an, an American export for yeah. us. Well, it was always sugary. Um, but I like, unlike you, I, mean, I like popcorn with chocolate, with caramel, with everything. I should have just like popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> no, me, I can't do all those. Well, there's a combo. Let me tell you. Do you take ice cream? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you drop your popcorn in the ice cream and go, ah. Ah, chinelo. Heavenly. <laughs> So I'm going to try that out. <laughs> okay, well, before we keep talking about popcorn, someone will be wondering where they want to go and get popcorn this evening. All right, um, let me start with you, Uti. What, what did you find for us in the news? Uh, I wish my story was a better story, but as we have come into the new year, uh, um, sadly, the trend of buildings collapsing continues. So this happened um, yesterday night, Wednesday night, in the Aramira area of Ikeja, a building that was uh, is a commercial building because it was formerly housing a supermarket. Um, and the way the story is placed, which is actually why I took the story, because sometimes I also want to call out our colleagues in the media about, about the quality of the reporting. Um, but this story basically says that there were unskilled workers or unskilled laborers working on the building, which resulted in a partial collapse. So whether they're blaming the unskilled laborers, I'm not sure. But it looks like the building was uh, being refitted after the former tenant moved, moved out, or the former um, supermarket then moved out. Um, and unfortunately, resulted in the life of uh, a, a man who I believe was a welder. And the Lassema was on, on um, called in. And this is where the conflicting information comes in because one person says, one report says the building is stable and poses no threat to other buildings. Another part, another part of the report says um, efforts are ongoing to demolish the building. So not really sure which it is, but the main thing there is of course that this worrying trend of buildings collapsing in Lagos still continues and sadly um, a life has been lost. 
Very, very sad. Honestly. Imagine starting the year with this, this kind of year. news. Uh, let me go to you, Chinelo. What, what did you find for us on the news? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Usain Bolt loses $12 million to hackers. Hmm. Imagine waking up in the morning and then you see that all your life savings gone. I, now, I'm wondering why they even left $12,000 remaining in the account for him. Okay, so according to the report, the Jamaican Olympic sprinting champion Usain Bolt on Thursday lost $12 million in his account with an investment company. Stocks and Security Limited, that's the name of the company. The tractor's lawyer said they are ready to file a lawsuit that will make it possible to recover the lost money that mysteriously disappeared from Bolt's account. It's distressing news for anyone, and certainly in the case of Mr. Bolt, who established his account as part of his private pension. It's a grave disappointment, and we're hoping that the matter will be resolved in a way that Mr. Bolt will recover his money and be able to live in peace. I really do hope, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I really do hope that they can get this money back, because <sighs> this will be very, very, very sad. Well, I, I keep wondering that with this age of, Uti, help me out here now. You are in the finance finance space right with this age of technology shouldn't it be easier for us to be able to trace things like this well um technology swings both ways so whilst the technology is also improving in terms of what it allows us to do what it allows us to track it also allows the hackers to do a lot more mm. so um it's really a race on both sides uh, how to track these things. And it depends on how the money um, itself was taken, um, whether it was due to uh, a, a lapse or a gap in the system that they then capitalized on, or it is one that they've actually been malicious enough to, to seek out, create, and then take advantage of. But I would imagine that if it's from a company, then um, he shouldn't have that liability. The company in itself would be um, liable, yeah. but um, let's see how it goes. But when when Chinelo was talking about losing money, I mean, twelve million is chicken change compared to Elon Musk and his two hundred billion. So there's always context. Uti, <laughs> <laughs> if me lose one 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 one, ah, one thousand naira right, right now, one thousand naira, it will not be funny. <laughs> So, to eat man is on. Uh, <laughs> All right, Glory, what did you find in the news? NNPC cargo policy for straighting Nigerian ship owners, operators. Um, in line with the so many things going on in the economy right now, I think this also is another issue we're also facing in Nigeria as a nation. It, it reads, stakeholders in the country's maritime sector have stated that Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited reliance on foreign ships for lifting of petroleum product is having an adverse impact on local ship owners. A member of the Nigerian Indigenous Ship Owners Association, Mr. Emmanuel Ilori, argued that many Nigerian vessels are littering the country's waterways due to unfavorable cargo policy of NNPCL. Um, I still will ask this question. I feel it's high time we as Nigerians become very patriotic in terms of our national pride. So very recently, we always have this issue of the Nigerian pol the government policy, we not favoring business owners. And this still speaks a lot with respect to that. Why are our policies not favoring, favoring business owners? Most of the times, you see government implementing policies, you know, in the, with the idea of trying to help business owners. But when it comes to implementation, it's actually not helping business owners. When I was um, trying to go through this, um, this write-up, I had to go as far back as 2015. In 2015, I, went, I came across an article which states that Nigerian lost about $6.2 billion in terms of paying foreign vessels to lift crude oil. Let's say this was 2015, and by then we had we did not have a lot of these local ship um, crew, companies. yes, shipping yeah. companies. But now we now have them in place. Why is the government not still using them? If you read further down this article, it says that about 98 percent of this crude is still being lifted by foreign companies. Now, if you calculate from 2015 to night to till date, if they are using about they are losing about 6.2 billion, that's mm -hmm. roughly about 49 billion which would have come into the country, increasing our GDP, bringing employment. So mm -hmm. this is still a call for 
not just setting policies, not just saying we are doing things to help business. This also extends to the manufacturing industry. You find people complaining, exporters, they're having challenges. And yet the government keeps saying they're implementing policies to help us. But why are these policies not helping us in reality? So that's what I have on you. I can see. <laughs> I think it would be nice to have some of these people come on board to even so help us understand big, again, because yes. again. So it's not one thing. So some of these kinds of shipments, I believe that has some level of technicalities. Mm. Again, you work in, you have a company that you, that they do all these offshore yeah. things. You know how processes, you know, when it comes to issues around all this offshore and whatever, there are strong processes. So these Nigerian companies, have they put in the processes in place? Mm -hmm. It's not the one that you are shipping something, maybe you forgot to do insurance, this, this, this something sinks and everybody loses, you know? I, I'm just saying that it, it will take a, a thorough kind of company to be able to gain some of these kinds of contracts. Mm -hmm. So it's, let's not just be quick to say, oh, use them. Let's be sure, first of all, that they have the capacity, right, and competency for that kind of, um, what's it called? Because all these ones that I'm even speaking so, so they are launching it next week. <laughs> so Edo State um, Government has confirmed the arrest of seven um, of two village chiefs in connection with the January 7th um, train attack, which um, resulted in the kidnap of about 20 passengers in Igweben train station, right? So the Commissioner for Communication, Chris, had disclosed this, that these people have been arrested and um, some other people are also held. Um, um, they are also, um, some other pa people, suspect, suspects are also being held by the police that were connect in connection with the incident. Um, um, of course, that adding that two remaining passengers in captivity have also been rescued from the security agencies. So if I, when I read further down the story, there's a bit of a, a twist because now the executive director of ACE and Youth for Good Governance and Social Justice, Benson Odia, had told some of the correspondents to say that um, these two chiefs, for instance, that were arrested in connection with this kidnapping, yeah. that is, is a political um, uh, fight. He said because <laughs> it seems like these two people now are like um, um, uh, um, supporting a pol oh, his, the governor's parts. opposition. Ah. So the governor is now using, you know, kidnapping because it happened around oh their vicinity God. to, you know, pin it down on them. So we're going to be seeing a lot of these things. However, when the spokesperson of the police was actually contacted, uh, I think his name is Chidi Mwabuzo, uh, to ask, okay, what are the identity of mm -hmm. these people that have been arrested, linked, and all of that? They said the man's phone was switched off. On oh, that okay. note. <laughs> okay. Say no more. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> but you see, it's quite interesting because these are the things that we're going to be seeing in 2023. It's, ah, no, it's political. It's not political, it's right? I mean, well, but, I mean, so we're discussing the youth, right? Do you mm. think our youth, do you think we, we have the power to install the next president? That's a conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>